The Amazon rainforest, a realm of teeming life, a place of vibrant biodiversity and home to secrets that have remained hidden for centuries. But within its depths, there are whispers of the impossible. Lost cities swallowed by time, creatures that defy categorization, and remnants of a past that challenge our understanding of history. Prepare to witness the bizarre and the inexplicable discoveries from the Amazon that defy all logic. Mystery spider. Yeah, for this first one, we're not even sure what kind of spider it is. How calming is that? Let's do it. Some kind of spider is making what's referred to as silkhenge. Yeah, this piece of spider art was first discovered back in 2013 by Troy Alexander, who posted a photo of it on the internet, asking for help and identifying what exactly he's looking at, but no one could help identify it because it's a totally unknown phenomenon. These structures are created by spiders or some sort of spider to help with reproduction because they're protecting their eggs. It looks quite alien, but this is all just to protect little baby spiders in that middle tip. There's one main spire that's constructed of spider silk and that's where the eggs are contained and then surrounding that spire is a sort of a circular fence that is also made of spider silk. Similar appearance to Stonehenge, hence the name Silkhenge. But to this day, we haven't found much. This was discovered back in 2013 and only a year ago, we got more information. Tropical science communicator Phil Torres recently visited Peru and he got footage in 4K. It's beautiful. We no longer have to slide through the same three grainy photos. Check this out. Torres explains how this research has affected his well-being, obviously. He said it's the thing that keeps him up at night because it's so annoyingly hard to find. Despite having seen it in so many places he goes, the next time it's like it was never there at all. Yeah, that's frustrating. It's also tiny too. In this recent clip, it's beautiful. Again, high definition. You can really see how intricate the work is, but Torres also discovered that these things are tiny and they come in clusters. So if you find one, there's probably a few nearby. Also, don't destroy it. We still have no idea who or what's making these silk Kenjas, so take some photos, hang out a bit, do some research. Number nine, the Brazilian wandering spider. Its bite can give you an erection that lasts for hours. That's a real fact, and that's how I'm gonna start this uh, point here. This animal is dangerous. Its bite, of course, will hurt you. You'll be sweating. Blood pressure will increase, hence that side effect. They're more commonly known as banana spiders, so guess I can't eat bananas anymore. There goes my favorite snack. These little guys have been listed as the world's most venomous spider in a handful of years in the Guinness Book of World Records. We love, we love records. Record-breaking spiders. If its name didn't already tip you off, these things can be found in Brazil. There's eight different kinds of wandering spiders. Um, avoid them all. That's my advice here on MA10. That's it. How does that sound? Boom. Science is quite interesting here. They're trying to create the next Viagra using the spider's venom. That's why I started with that wild side effect. There's always a point to it, not just being silly all the time. The future is here, friends, and apparently it's filled with spiders. Just cuts to a bunch of old dudes in the woods just hanging out like... Mm, please. Number eight, bullet ants. They're called bullet ants because their bite feels like a bullet wound. Promising start, awesome. They're also referred to as the Parapanera clavada, but that sounds like a dark curse in Harry Potter, so we're gonna call them the bullet ant for now. They're commonly found in tropical rainforests in Central and South America. Their sting is considered, yeah, the most powerful in the world, hence the bullet thing, and its effects can last 24 hours. Yeah, another fun nickname for them is a 24 hour ant. They're also the world's largest ant, so you can really see it coming. You should see it coming, worst case scenario. These guys get you in a colony though, game over. There's a good chance you won't even survive at all. One bite is bad enough, let alone a colony. Its venom's so powerful, it's being studied right now for its use as a pesticide. Yeah, we're sacrificing ants to further our research on how to sacrifice ants. This is dark, that sounds pretty dark when you say it like that. There's actually an indigenous Amazonian tribe in Brazil and they use bullet ant stings as part of a ceremonial process to become a warrior. I would not pass, I wouldn't even make it to the island. I'm not good with bugs. They have to keep a straight face the entire time whilst getting bit. That's so impressive. Number seven, the green anaconda. Of course we have to mention the anaconda. It's so scary, the biggest snake ever. That's horrible. This movie came out 25 years ago. I remember watching it with my family. It made me extremely afraid of snakes and water. Although the green anaconda is a non-venomous snake, the boa constrictor is still one of the most feared. Obviously, look at its size. Green anacondas live in calm marshes or slow streams. They wait until their large prey gets thirsty, and once they come to the water, the anaconda suffocates its lunch. It wraps itself around it like 17 times. It's the scariest thing I've ever seen. And then it just slowly, ugh, just slowly eats it. It's so scary. It's so dinosaur, really. Anacondas hunt prey that's larger than us humans, so if they wanted to, they could for sure just swallow us whole. There's only no evidence of it happening because humans rarely interact with them. So yeah, let's keep that ratio at the zero point. That would be great. Don't be the first guy to get eaten by an anaconda, please. Number six, the boiling river. Ooh, this one's hot. 
it's real hot. It's pretty common knowledge that the Amazon is home to the longest river in the world, but there is another river found in the Amazon rainforest that is equally as astonishing but for all the wrong reasons, yeah, it's not good. As its name suggests, water temperatures in the boiling river reach up to 93 degrees Celsius. The steam coming off the surface of the water sure is inviting, but animals and humans know better by now. Yeah, no skinny dipping in this river, or any river for that matter. I don't know, there's still water snakes. There's still debate around the source of the heat for this river, but as of right now, it's believed to be entirely natural and geothermal. Now, despite the river not being near any active volcanoes or geothermal vents, it is quite an anomaly. It's odd. Just a hot, inviting river for no reason. There are local legends, of course, that say the river is a place of power and that the mother of the waters is responsible for the creation of this incredible and strange, mystifying river. Yeah, I like the sounds of that way more than geothermal activity. That's cool. Oh, the mother of the waters? Yeah, she heated this one up. Come on in. Geothermal? I'm like, eh, it's hot. You might burn your toes. Number five. Black Cayman. If you aren't a fan of alligators, just go ahead and skip to number four, I guess, because this one's terrifying, honestly. These super alligators live in calm, slow-moving rivers, of course, like the big bad anacondas, places you wouldn't expect a dinosaur to jump out at you. Essentially, that's where you're gonna find one. Just like dangerous river snakes, these black caiman will take it slow. They'll wait for their prey to have a little sip of water, and then, and only then, the largest predator in the Amazon will then race out and grab its lunch, and then quickly return to the water. It's so scary, I've seen this on Reddit, it is, they're fast, they are quite fast. Birds, reptiles, mammals, you name it, this thing can eat it all and it will eat it all with this big <sighs> chomping mouth. Between 2008 and October 2013 alone, there were 43 black caiman attacks on people. Yeah, human beings, so stay away from the Amazon, stay away from the water, don't do anything. Don't even go to zoos anymore, just stop. Don't even exist. Number four, Silkhenge. We don't even know what spider this is, so yeah, mystery spider leaving mystery art. Here we go, he's the Banksy of spiders. Let's talk about him. There's some sort of spider that's making what is referred to as a Silkhenge. Now it's tiny, it's on a little leaf. You will miss this, that's why it's so rare to find. This piece of spider art was first discovered in 2013 by Troy Alexander. Side note, what an amazing name, like Troy Alexander. Alexander, you're a Greek goddess, my friend. Troy Alexander posted a photo of it on the internet asking for help in identifying it. I mean, because obviously it's so alien, but nobody can help identify because it's a totally unknown phenomena. And these structures help with reproduction because they're actually protecting eggs. That's the whole purpose. There's one main spire that is constructed of spider silk, and then that's where all the eggs are contained. Then there's also a wall or a fence that's made of spider silk to protect all the eggs in the middle. Therefore, it looks like Stonehenge. That's where it gets its name from, obviously. Stonehenge. Silkhenge, they look the same, both fascinating. One's really gross and made of webs, the other's made of rocks and lovely. Hopefully one day we can find out the real creator of these sculptures so we can give them the proper credit they deserve. But number three, mosquitoes. These guys suck no matter where you are, but when it comes to the Amazon, oh, it's much worse than you could ever imagine, of course, as if anything else is not calming in there. Mosquitoes are one of the most dangerous because they can fly. You don't see them coming, and once they get you, too late, the damage has already been done. They have your blood, and now they're gonna go sell it on the black web. If you travel to parts of the Amazon rainforest and you don't have yellow fever vaccinations or extremely strong mosquito repellent, then you are going to have an extremely bad time. Yeah, these guys are just clouds of malaria waiting for you to walk right into. And that's so disgusting, I can't even do it. Even cottages, I can't do it. I'm not a fan of mosquitoes. Number two, bullet ants. Ugh, Ant-Man would not fight this ant, no way. They're called bullet ants because their bite feels like a bullet wound. So that is a promising start, my friends. It's also referred to as a Parapanera clavada. The bullet ant is commonly found in tropical rainforests in Central and South America. Their sting is considered the most powerful in the world, hence the, you know, bullet alias. And its effects can last 24 hours. That's a long time to be in a horrible amount of pain. These guys get you in a colony though? Game over, there's a good chance that you won't survive that. One was bad enough, let alone a colony? Oh, that's terrible. It's venom is so powerful that currently these ants are being studied for its use as a pesticide. So we're sacrificing ants in order to further their research on how to sacrifice ants. Number one, Brazilian wandering spider. Alrighty, this spider can actually help you guys out. Let's do it. Its bite can give you an erection that lasts for hours. That's a real fact. This animal is also obviously dangerous. Its bite will also hurt besides, you know, that amazing side effect. You'll be sweating, blood pressure will increase, hence, you know, that side effect. And they're more commonly known as banana spiders. It can be found, of course, in Brazil, and there's eight different kinds of wandering spiders. So my advice, avoid them all. 
The science is quite interesting here though. They're trying to create the next Viagra by using the spider's venom. Those are the top 10 terrifying Amazon forest discoveries that will make you never travel to the Amazon again. To start us off today, we have the recent discovery of what appears to be a valley of cities located beneath the jungles of the Ecuadorian Amazon. In early 2024, scientists were overjoyed to have stumbled across evidence of these cities as they validated over 20 years spent searching for the remains of ancient civilizations within the Amazon. The ruins were located using light detecting and ranging technology to scan beneath the bush of the forest, which revealed over 6,000 rectangular structures made of compressed earth, as well as ancient drainage systems and sophisticated road networks connecting at least 15 different distinct settlements within the valley. The ruins located are estimated to be around 2,500 years old and are said to have been home to tens if not hundreds of thousands of peoples from the Kilimope and Upano cultures. While there is not much else we know about this new discovery, scientists are eager to continue their research in the area. But I have to ask, do you guys think this might be the lost city of Z? Next up, we have the Brazilian wandering spider. Here we go again. This incredibly dangerous eight-legged arachnid's body measures in at just about 3.5 centimeters, 1.4 inches, and has a leg span that can reach up to 15 centimeters, almost six inches. The animal is nocturnal, preying on small insects and big ones and amphibians and mice, along with other small mammals. Brazilian wanderers have a jump distance of over one foot, and they use this, along with their speed, to find, track, and pounce on their prey. And when this happens, things get dark. The spider bites down on its prey with its sharp fangs, injecting them with its potent venom and leaving them powerless in their fight for freedom. So just how bad is this bite? Well, it's pretty bad. When the Brazilian wanderer decides to bite, which it does when hungry, startled, or defensive, the venom released affects ion channels and chemical receptors in the unlucky recipient. This can cause incredibly painful, hour-long erections in men, as well as loss of muscle control, severe pain, and difficulty breathing in both men and women, which can and has led to death due to oxygen deprivation. And even when a bite victim is given an anti-venom, it can still take up to a week to recover from this excruciating pain. Also, they lay up to 1,000 eggs at a time, so do with that information what you will. That was fun, right? Well, let's do it again, because next up we have the golden poisonous dart frog. Cute, right? Well, kinda, I guess. I mean, how cute can something really be when just brushing against it has the potential to put you in contact with enough poison to take down a full-grown adult in a matter of minutes? Nicknamed the terrible frog, it is said that an amount of poison equivalent to just two to three grains of table salt is enough to cause fatality in humans. Luckily to date, there have been no recorded cases of human fatality caused by these guys, but less luckily, there has also been no antidote created in the unlikely case of contact either. So what would happen if a person were to brush up against one of these guys who are 20 times more toxic than any other known dart frog? Well, should their toxins enter your bloodstream, you would experience serious swelling, nausea, and muscular paralysis. I feel like I don't need to remind you that our heart is almost entirely made up of muscle tissue. Now, believe it or not, this small amphibian measuring in at just 1.3 to 5.1 centimeters, 0.5 to 2 inches, doesn't actually make its own poison. While we're not 100% sure what causes the poison, scientists have theorized that its formation on the frog's skin is due largely to the animal's diet, which consists of poison beetles and other anthropods. Number seven, dart frog. You may be thinking, thank God, a frog, something cute, something unlike the bullet ant. Guess again, mm, not this time. Small but mighty, the poison dart frog is one of the deadliest animals on earth. I left the word poison out of the title. I juked you out, I did it on purpose. Its shiny yellow skin will certainly attract the eye, but if you decide to try and you know catch one of these slippery boys, its poison can kill 10 fully grown adults, all bad. Indigenous hunters figured this out and they coated the tips of their arrows or darts in this toxin. The toxin created naturally here is called Betraco toxin. Another creature we've mentioned on this channel before that also has the same toxin is the Pitui bird. That's in Australia though, it's far away. Either way, a lot of poison moving around us in nature. It's actually pretty alarming. Birds and frogs, just, I'm just gonna stay home. I'm just gonna stay home and do this all day. Number six, mosquitoes. These guys suck, no matter where you are. But when it comes to the Amazon, like everything else, it's much worse than you could ever imagine. Mosquitoes are one of the most dangerous because they can fly and you don't see them coming. And once they get you, the damage has already been done. They're just full of blood. How gross is that? They're horrible. They're 
If you travel to parts of the Amazon rainforest and you don't have yellow fever vaccinations or extremely strong mosquito repellent, you're going to have a bad time. These suckers are clouds of malaria just waiting for you to walk into by accident. And then you go, oh, and it's too late. Number five, decoy spider. Oh, these are all horrible. These decoy building spiders are exceptionally small, but super, super smart. These spiders only measure to be about five millimeters in length, but you might see a much larger spider hanging out in a web that they've created. See, this might sound scary, but this large spider is actually a fake spider. It's a decoy. It's a decoy spider that the small spider built out of various materials like food scraps, debris, even their old skin to make a bigger, scarier spider. That's horrible, I wish I didn't know this. Look, art is subjective, okay, that's for sure. I don't think this is the most lovely piece of animal art on the planet, but it works, it gets the job done. A rather impressive defense mechanism for such a tiny little dude. These spiders were only discovered pretty recently, so again, not much is known about them, as there still needs to be tons of research done, just like the other horrible spider on this list. It is, however, believed that this is a feature that has evolved in this particular spider, so it's possible we've only recently discovered it because it's a new feature. Yeah, how neat is that? Hey, spiders are learning new tricks. Hit that thumbs up. <laughs> I'm so scared, cheers. Number four, the electric eel. First of all, never rub an electric eel like they're a genie lamp. You're gonna want three more wishes if you do that, my friend. That was the moray eel. That one can bite your fingers off, which is horrible. But you should never touch an eel in the first place because a lot of them are electric. As its name hints towards, these type of eels can mess you up even if you weren't to get the first hit. Specifically, the newly discovered two and a half meter Electrophorus Volti. Yeah, the Electrophorus Volti. No, that's not a new hybrid car coming out on the market. This is a dangerous beast. It was appropriately named after Alessandro Volta, AKA the guy who invented the battery, and it can release a shock up to 800 160 volts, more than seven times the voltage of your average wall plug. It was recently discovered only a year ago that electric eels in Amazon rivers like to travel in packs. They like to travel with their friends and they all head to the bar together. How fun is that? Packs of electric water snakes. Does it get worse than that? It can't get worse than that, can it? Number three, black caiman. It can get worse than that. It can get a lot worse than that. If you're not a fan of alligators, you might want to skip to the next one. Black caiman is the largest family member in the alligator day crew. These super alligators live in calm, slow moving rivers, places you wouldn't expect, you know, a dinosaur to be and jump out at you, essentially. Just like dangerous river snakes, one I might talk about later, these black caiman will take it slow and just wait for their prey to have a sip of water. And then at that point, the largest predator in the Amazon will grab its lunch and quickly return to the water. Just like that. Be very loud and very fast. This thing eats birds, it eats reptiles, mammals even. Even, yeah, yeah. This thing can and will eat everything. Between 2008 and 2013 alone, there were 43 black caiman attacks on people. Yeah, a handful of these attacks were fatal. I'll leave it at that. Number two, pink dolphins. We'll do a nice one before we do the horrible big bad number one. Deal? Deal. Pink dolphins of the Amazon River. They're the largest of all river dolphins and adults. More often than not, males end up turning pink as they age, and we have no idea why. Scientists aren't exactly sure why these guys are pink or why the color comes later in life, seeing as, you know, they're born gray. Our leading theory here is that the color is brought on by scar tissue that results from fighting with other dolphins or predators. I'm sure it's not an easy go, you know, swimming through schools of electric eels and all that jazz, so yeah, fair. It could be a pretty rough environment. Some old legends hilariously mention that pink dolphins may be can turn into a handsome man in the evenings. And then during this time, they would hypnotize and seduce young women before turning back into dolphins again near sunrise. Yeah, forget Morbius. I wanna see that movie. That's a supervillain origin story I would pay to see. The pink dolphin handsome man. He has one day to find love, and then he turns back into a dolphin. Number one, green anacondas. Of course, we have to talk about the anaconda, specifically the green anaconda. It's green like the Hulk, because it's always angry and scary and violent. This movie came out 25 years ago. I remember watching Anaconda with my family, and it made me extremely afraid of snakes, actually. This was probably the one that did it. So how accurate was that film? Although the green anaconda is a non-venomous snake, the boa constrictor is still one of the most dangerous ever. It's the most feared, definitely the most feared. Green anacondas live in calm marshes or slow streams. And again, they wait until their large prey gets thirsty. And once they come to the water, the anaconda suffocates and wraps around its lunch. Yeah. Anacondas hunt prey that's larger than us humans. So if they wanted to, they could for sure eat us. There's only no evidence of it happening because humans rarely interact with them in general. So anacondas probably don't know they could eat us. Green anacondas can reach lengths of up to 30 feet. So plenty of space for you and yours. 
Awesome. You went yours. He ends it on a crack, on a voice crack. That's great. That's how scared I am is Anaconda. Up first on our list, we have the incredibly bizarre appearance of a massive humpback whale in the heart of the Amazon jungle. No, I'm not kidding. A humpback whale was legitimately found washed up on land 50 feet away from the nearest ocean. And how it got there? Honestly, no one really knows. In 2019, the 36 foot, 10 ton animal was discovered far from its natural habitat in the undergrowth of the jungle. It was located after scientists were alerted of a large gathering of scavenger birds spotted in the jungle. There are a couple theories as to how or why the whale ended up where it did, none of which really do it for me, but I'll share them with you so you don't feel left out. The first theory is that the 10 ton whale was thrown out of the water and into the woods by rough seas after floating too close to the shores of Arona Beach, which is strange because whales are not usually found along the north coast of Brazil during February when the specimen was found. Not only that, but you're really telling me rough ties through a 10 ton whale 50 feet into the jungle? Yeah, I'm just not buying it. Another theory is that some kind of mysterious alien force dropped the poor guy there, which honestly might actually make more sense at this point. But as always, when I can't figure something out, I'd love to know what you guys think. Next on the list, we have the boiling river of the Amazon, the perfect spa date location for someone you really don't like. The river's name is Shanai Tempishka, and it is said to be the home of an ancient Amazonian water spirit. Located in the heart of the central Peruvian Amazon, the river flows at a temperature of up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit, 93 degrees Celsius, for just shy of four miles. The waters range from quite shallow all the way to 16 feet deep, and the widest point of the lake is 80 feet across. The river's heat comes from thermal vents, and while hot springs are not unheard of in this world, the magnitude of Chennai makes it a record-breaking find. Something else has also set this river apart from others found in the past. Generally, thermal rivers are heated by volcanic activity underneath the earth below the waterways, but that is not the case for this hot giant, which is heated solely by the earth's geothermal energy that escapes through cracks in the floor of the riverbeds, warming up the waters. Good for swimming? Absolutely not, but you could always make a cup of tea. Next on the list, we have the Goliath Bird Eater, and heads up, it's a spider, and yes, it does eat birds. The Goliath is a massive tarantula. Its body measures in at about five inches, and it has a leg span of up to 11, which makes this thing certified nightmare fuel. The animal is obviously a carnivore, consuming not only birds, but mice, lizards, and frogs as well. It hunts by pouncing on its prey and then piercing it with inch-long things, which act as hypodermic needles, pumping neurotoxins into the bodies of its victims. The spider then drags its dinner back to its burrow, where it liquefies the animal's insides before sucking it dry. So now that we know how it catches its own prey, let's discuss how it avoids becoming someone else's. The Goliath has pretty bad eyesight, but it does have highly sensitive leg hairs that can sense vibrations from all around. When the spider notices a predator is getting too close, it will rub its legs together, releasing the tiny harpoon-like hairs, which are tipped with stinging barbs, into the air, irritating predators' skin and eyes, strongly encouraging them to find a different meal. Also, they can lay between 50 and 150 eggs at a time, which is just awesome. Next up, we are keeping things cold-blooded with the Bushmaster Snake, a highly venomous genus of the Pit Viper family. The predominantly nocturnal reptile, whose diet consists largely of small mammals and birds, enjoys the damp forest floors of the Amazon rainforest. While you think a 6 to 12 foot, 11 pound snake might be hard to miss, this clever animal has been known to camouflage itself into the mud, grass, and and fallen leaves, allowing it to better hunt for prey as well as protect itself against its very few predators. The fangs of the viper work like hypodermic needles, administering some of the deadliest snake venom in the world on demand when the cold-blooded creature decides to bite down on its prey. The venom, which works quickly to take out the animal's various prey, has horrific effects on humans. When the venom is injected, it quickly enters the bloodstream, causing vomiting, severe abdominal pain, diarrhea, sweating, low blood pressure, slowed heart rate, incoagulable blood, and shock. Luckily, there is an anti-venom available for this snake's bite, but even still, the symptoms are known to last up to 24 hours. And of course, without the anti-venom, death is pretty much a given, with human deaths by Bushmaster bites racking up to an astonishing 84 in just 14 years between 2001 and 2015. 
Now, I know I've mentioned this before, but growing up in the islands has given me kind of a soft spot for sharks and also educated me on the fact that more deaths per year are caused by falling coconuts than shark attacks. So naturally, I found it quite unnerving to learn about the highly aggressive nature of the bull sharks residing in the Amazon rivers. Also, I didn't know that sharks could live in rivers, let alone freshwater ones. Well, apparently while there is a general rule that sharks are only able to exist in bodies of salt water, it appears that the bull shark is somewhat of an exception. The animal's ability to survive despite a lack of salt in the environment is due to their unique kidneys, which can sense changes in salinity levels and inhibit the shark from losing its vital salt stores within its body, recycling it throughout the animal instead rather than flushing it back into the ocean. The bull shark's diet consists mainly of fish, but they are known to eat pretty much anything including turtles, birds, sloths, dolphins, stingrays, and even other bull sharks. And yes, you heard me right, I did say sloths. The aggressive animal can grow to be up to 13 feet long and 1,300 pounds and has 50 rows of sharp, serrated, rotating teeth and an affinity for shallow waters. So I would definitely keep an eye out the next time you're trolling along the riverbanks of the Amazon. I'm just saying. Next on our list, we have the discovery of significant and significantly large man-made ditches that predate the Amazon, a discovery which raises many questions about how ancient civilizations lived in conjunction with the forests. The ditches found were a variety of shapes, straight, square, and ring-like, and while their purpose remains unknown, scientists have come up with a few theories, including defense or drainage systems, or perhaps religious practices. Using soil samples taken from sediment cores, which are pretty much just like sticking an apple core into the earth and then pulling up the sediment in perfectly kept layers, scientists were able to determine that the ditches and rings would have been made between 2,000 and 3,000 years ago, when the area had a much more savanna-like climate. Not much else is known about these mysterious rings, but because I feel like I can read your minds, I have to ask, what do you guys think? Ancient civilizations or aliens? Next up, we have the map of the Sapanawa tribe's people that occurred in the Amazon in 2014. The formerly uncontacted tribe, located along the border of Brazil and Peru, suffered much devastation, forcing them to come out of isolation in order to seek help from the Brazilian government after a series of killings were committed in their village, most likely by loggers and substance traffickers. The two invasive groups have become the primary reason for many tribes deciding to break their vow of silence with the outside world as they fear for their safety as well as the safety of the forest that surrounds them. While the tribe did not wish to come out of isolation, they felt as though it was their only option. But they do hope that one day with the assistance of the government, they'll be able to return to their lives of solitude and once again feel safe in their forest home. For this next one, we're taking it back to nature with the South American rattlesnake, another highly venomous pit viper species native to the Amazon rainforest. The rattlesnake can range from anywhere between 1.5 to 1.9 meters, 4.9 to 6.2 feet, and they are found enjoying the tropical grass lowlands of the Amazon. While the animal mainly feeds on reptiles, rodents, marsupials, and other unidentified mammals, unfortunately it has been known to be highly volatile, lashing out at human passerbys as well. The good thing is, most attacks come with warning signs, a raised head and body posture, as well as continuous rattling of its tail. When the snake does bite, however, venom injection is almost instant, and if its victim does not receive adequate treatment in a timely manner, death is pretty much a bona fide guarantee. The venom is made up of a mix of hemotoxins, myotoxins, and neurotoxins, and while it's pretty gnarly stuff, there is actually an upside to it. In recent years, scientists have actually figured out a way to isolate certain properties of the South American rattlesnake's venom and have been able to use them to synthesize a vaccine for HCV, hepatitis C, which is the leading cause of liver disease in humans worldwide. So I guess it's not all that bad. Next up, we have the Amazonian red-bellied piranha, whose bark is most certainly way more surprising than its bites. I mean, we all know you shouldn't stick your finger in a piranha tank, or Darla's mouth for Finding Nemo fans, but did you know that this specific species of piranha is also known to produce a bark-like sound to warn predators from entering into its personal space? The red bellies can grow to be up to 15 inches, 38 centimeters long, and their upper and lower rows of teeth are off-centered so that they can work together almost like scissors to cut apart their prey, with a bite force equivalent to 30 times its body weight of three to seven plus pounds, it's no wonder that their teeth sometimes get stuck in the bodies of their victims after attack. But no worries, these guys are known to regenerate full sets of teeth in just 100 days. 
They enjoy a diet of fish, insects, worms, crustaceans, and sometimes larger animals, but generally won't attack humans unless provoked, which I don't recommend doing. And if for some reason you're worried about the numbers of the red-bellied piranha dwindling anytime soon, I will ease your mind and let you know that not only is the species thriving, but females of the species can lay thousands of eggs at a time, so I think it's safe to say that they are all good in that regard. Alright you guys, last on our list today we have the Kandiru pea fish, a parasitic fish that you do not want going anywhere near your bits and bobs. The Kandiru, also known as the toothpick fish, generally inhabits the gills of catfish found in the Amazon rivers, attracted to the smells of ammonia and urea coming from the animal. When the parasitic fish enters the gill flaps, it uses spines coming from its body to secure itself in place and then begins sucking the blood of its host using sharp needle-like teeth. Some of you probably already know the turn I'm about to take with this, but if not, I should warn you it's pretty dark and super gross. Not only have these fish been known to swim in the small orifices of other fish, but on rare occasions, confused by the scent of urea coming from humans, they tend to take a wrong turn and end up somewhere they are most definitely not welcomed the male urethra. I'm going to spare you the description of what happens once they get up in there because I think you get the picture, but just know it's an incredibly painful experience that requires a very invasive procedure to rectify. So, you know, stay safe out there. 10. City of Giants We often talk about aliens being responsible for building great monuments like the pyramids, but did we ever consider it might be giants? In 2012, something was discovered deep in the Amazon that might suggest just that. A group of researchers, paired with a team of local guides, discovered what appears to be the remains of a large city close to the Ecuador side of the forest. At the center of the city was a large stone pyramid, 80 meters tall, with a flat area on top which held many artifacts. Scattered around the area were many things like old pottery and most curiously, massive stone tools. They appeared to be much too large and heavy for any average sized human to ever have been able to use. The government of Ecuador ruled that the formations were just naturally occurring, but the researchers heavily dispute this, saying that due to the rectangle shaped bricks, cement like bonding material, and perfectly circular holes, it can't possibly have been caused by nature. Instead, they, and others, believe that this was a city built by giants long ago. What you believe is up to you. Number 9. The Mapinguari Monster There are many different tribes scattered throughout the Amazon, some without contact to each other, and some without contact to even the outside world. Yet one thing that they all have in common are their stories of a large, 7 foot tall, rainforest beast, similar to many cultures' depictions of Bigfoot. The creature is described to be bulletproof and having long hair. It apparently also has a smell that is so strong it makes hunters dizzy. These stories are so widespread and similar that many researchers have gone out in search of the monster, with no luck so far. Some scientists say that this is likely just a legend passed down for centuries, dating back to when giant land sloths roam the forests, but local people believe it to be a spirit that will kill those who hunt more than their fair share. Number 8. The Boiling River Hidden deep in the Amazon forest is a hidden river with unexpected and potentially magical properties. Children are told the legends of the Boiling River, about a giant snake spirit that heats it up. Andre Russo went in search of the river after having been raised on the legends by his grandfather, wanting to know if the stories of a boiling river could possibly be true. He took a long journey to reach the supposed location of the river, having to ask permission from a shaman who guarded the waters in order to gain access and study it. Russo discovered that the average temperature of the river was a whopping 187 degrees Fahrenheit with steam pouring out from the top. It's speculated that the river boils due to faults deep in the earth, but locals believe that it's a magical river with healing properties and use it in their medicinal practices. When Russo was there, he noticed the scariest part of the river, that it kills just about anything that falls into it, dead frogs and other animals floating around where he stood on the edge. Next on our list, we have the vampire wasp, a large-headed parasitic animal that grows to be just 0.2 shy of an inch, discovered in the Peruvian jungles of the Amazon. Two things you should know about this animal. One, the vampire wasp feeds 
by stinging its prey and then sucking out the blood and other internally bodily fluids of its victim. And two, the females lay eggs by locating a suitable insect host, stabbing it with their ovipositor, which is basically a tube-like egg-laying organ, and then laying eggs under the host's skin. When the eggs hatch, the juvenile wasps remain under the skin of their host, feeding on its insides until they become fully grown. I love you guys, but I hated learning that. Next up, at our halfway point, we have an animal absolutely no less terrifying than the rest, going by the name of T-Rex leech. And it was discovered, drumroll please, inside someone's nose. Also known as the Tyrant Leech King, this animal can grow to be just under 2 inches. Of course, as a leech, it survives by sucking the blood from its prey. Of course, as a leech, it survives by sucking the blood from its prey. The way it does this is by using its 8.13 millimeter teeth situated around its circular jaw to bite down on its prey and then moving around in a sawing motion to open up the wound. Already, I apologize, but in the name of entertainment and at the expense of me sleeping tonight, I'm gonna keep going. Besides the T-Rex leech's abnormally large teeth and body, there is one other thing that makes it just a bit different than others in the leech family. Instead of attacking exposed surface skin, this guy likes to get a little more intimate, aiming for the orifices of its host bodies such as, well, noses and mouths. Usually the noses and mouths of livestock, but judging by the nature in which it was discovered, I'd say they're really not that picky. Moving past our halfway point today, we have the giant centipede, which can grow up to 12 inches. Yay! This large and absolutely horrifying animal has a body that is composed of 21 to 23 distinct sections, with each section having its own pair of legs. Quick maths, that's 42 to 46 pokey little yellow legs. The animal generally feeds on insects, snails, and worms, and it does so by utilizing their quick speed to catch their prey, and then biting down hard with its two front legs tipped with large spikes that work like pinchers. The spikes then administer a paralyzing venom to its prey, rendering it well, screwed. I'm gonna ease your minds for a moment and let you know that these guys aren't really interested in attacking humans. Now that the moment's over, I will let you know what happens on the rare occasions these guys do decide to stray from their straight and narrow. The bite of a giant centipede can cause a person to experience headache, chest pain, heart tremors, nausea, and vomiting. Super cool. Moving right along, we've got the world's most powerful electric eel, bear with me, Electrophorus volti. It's a small, relatively docile animal, Oh wait, no, it's not. It's actually a 2 meter, 6 foot 7 inch long monster that can weigh up to 20 kilograms, which is 44 pounds. And it has sharp teeth on both its upper and lower jaws that it uses to tear apart its prey of small fish and shellfish. Don't worry, I know I bury the lead and I bet you're all dying to know just how electric this eel really is. Well, let me start off by saying the previously highest recorded voltage of an electric eel was 650 volts, which has caused fatal heart and respiratory failure failure in humans when shocked multiple times. This new guy's voltage is just a teeny bit higher, 210 volts higher to be exact. Simply put, this 860 volt electrical eel would cause a lot of damage. How much exactly? Well, we're not really sure yet, but I'll tell you this, I will not be the one to find out. If you guessed that next on the list we'd have another nightmarish creature capable of causing serious damage to those who come too close for comfort, give yourself a pat on the back because you're nailing it, as this next animal is exactly that. The pyra, also known as the vampire fish, does not suck blood or insides of its prey, but it does have extremely large fangs that can grow to be up to 15 centimeters long. That's 5.9 inches, almost half a foot of nightmare fuel. You might think there's some kind of saving grace here, but there's not. This animal is extremely fast and highly aggressive, considered to be one of the ultimate jungle predators. I guess we did have to even the playing field somehow though, as in recent years these feisty fish that measure in anywhere between 1.5 to 3 feet in length and weigh up to 20 pounds have become the catch of choice for fly fishers within the region. I hope you guys are doing all right, and I also hope you are not afraid of snakes, because if you are, this next one just might make your skin crawl. It's the green anaconda, aka the largest snake in the Amazon, reaching lengths of up to 30 feet, that's 9 meters, and diameters of up to 12 inches, 30.5 centimeters. And if you're still not impressed, these animals can weigh up to an astounding 550 pounds or 250 kilograms. These animals are members of the boa constrictor family, and although they have incredibly sharp teeth and powerful jaws, they are 
thankfully not venomous. But of course, they're incredibly strong and they use their strength to crush their prey by curling up around it and restricting its airways, providing little chance for escape. The green anaconda is not at all a picky eater either. With an expansive diet of fish, reptiles, amphibians, tapirs, deers, dogs, capybaras, sheep, and whatever the heck else they can find, really. Luckily for us, attacks on humans are pretty rare, but not unheard of, and yeah, they can swim, like really well. So you know, keep your eyes peeled for these masters of camouflage the next time you're taking a walk through the Amazon jungle. And finally, to finish us off today, we have the Amazonian bullet ant. Just a little guy with a lifespan of about 90 days, growing to be between just 0.07 to 1.2 inches long. Living in the humid lowlands of the Amazon rainforest, this demon creature has the most powerful sting in the world. Getting stung by this guy has been described as pure, intense, brilliant pain. Like walking over flaming charcoal with three inch nails embedded in your heels. Oh my god, the Amazon needs to chill. Besides up to 24 hours of an intense amount of pain, symptoms of being stung by the insect include fever, nausea, trembling, and cardiac arrhythmia. So while you won't die, you will for sure feel like you're in hell until the symptoms wear off. If you guys want to hear something really wild, listen up. There are certain Amazonian tribes that use these ants in coming of age ceremonies, requiring young men to wear gloves filled with them for a total of 10 minutes in order to achieve status within their community. And in order to be considered a village warrior, they must complete the ceremony a total of 20 times. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have pink dolphins. There's a few weird things going on with these guys, but let's start with the most obvious, which is of course their color. These residents of the Amazon River are the largest of all river dolphins, and adults end up acquiring a strange pink coloring, which is more prominent in the males. Scientists aren't exactly sure why these guys are pink or why their color comes later in life, as they are born with a more gray color that is usually expected of dolphins. There are of course theories as to how they get their colors, however, with the most common being the thought that the color is brought on by scar tissue that results from either rough games or fighting with other pink dolphins or predators. I said at the beginning of this point that they are strange for a few reasons, and while their super unique and gorgeous color is one, the other has less to do with them and more about a very interesting legend that surrounds them. Legend goes that these dolphins actually transform into very handsome men in the evenings, and during this time they hypnotize and seduce young women before turning back to dolphins again near sunrise. The origins of this myth are rooted in some pretty dark cover ups, so I think it's best if we just lay that one to rest and let these dolphins not take the blame for humans awful behavior. In our number 9 spot today we have the boiling river. It is pretty common knowledge that the Amazon is home to the longest river in the world, but there is another river found in the Amazon rainforest that is equally as astonishing, but for a very different reason. The boiling river got its name for being exactly that, as it is a river that is near a boiling point at all times. The water temperature reaches up to 93 degrees Celsius, which is just shy of the boiling point, and the steam coming off of the surface of the water is an obvious warning to all living creatures that it is absolutely unswimmable. You could, however, poach an egg in this river, although that's probably not the recommended cooking method. There is still debate around the source of heat for this river, but as of right now, it is believed to be entirely natural and geothermal. Despite the river not being near any active volcanoes or geothermal vents, it is quite an anomaly. There are of course more local legends that state the river is a place of power and that the mother of waters is responsible for the creation of this incredible and strange river. Either way, just don't swim in the river and everything will be fine. In our number 8 spot today we have Victoria Amazonica. This water lily is one of many abnormally large things that can be found in the Amazon rainforest, and it is found in the shallow waters of the Amazon River Basin. These lilies are not only the world's largest water lily, but they can also hold the weight of an adult human. They will begin to flower as the sun sets and take up to 48 hours to completely open, and they are absolutely beautiful. These flowers are not only super strong and super beautiful, but as they open, they also release a wonderful scent, which leaves me wondering if there's anything they can't do. One thing to be careful of though, if you encounter one and decide to step on it, it is that their leaves have thorns to protect them from pressure. Predators, so watch out for those. Actually, on a second thought, just because they can hold a human doesn't mean we have to step on them at all. 
Let's just admire their beauty and strength from afar and let them just be lilies like they're meant to be. Number seven, the potu bird. Throughout the Amazon rainforest lives a bird known as the common potu bird. If it's so common, then what makes it so scary? I mean, besides its face. First, let's mention these birds' tendency to always be found in pairs of two, a male and a female. Because of this, legend goes that there were two children, a boy and a girl, living with their father and stepmother. The stepmother was evil and greedy, wanting to gain all of her husband's inheritance. So she convinced the man to abandon his children within the forest to die. He succeeds, leaving them lost in the forest with no hope for them to find their way out. However, the mother spirit of the forest took pity on them and adopted the two as her own children, making them into birds. Stories go that the call of the potu bird sounds like children calling out in anguish, desperate to escape the forest and return to their family. If you think this legend sounds a lot like Hansel and Gretel, you'd be right. This one just contains a lot less candy and witches. Number six, dangerous animals. Well, we've somehow made it this far without mentioning the many scary and terrifying creatures hiding within the depths of the forest. Life in the forest has evolved these creatures to have many unique and frightening abilities in order to survive. Let's start with perhaps one of their most famous, piranhas. Piranhas live in the Amazon River Basin and are known for their incredibly strong and razor sharp bite, even being known to have eaten human flesh. Next. Poison dart frogs. While beautiful to look at, as their name suggests, they secrete a poison that can cause heart failure in just a few minutes. Arachnophobes look away as I'm going to tell you about the Brazilian wandering spider. It is one of the most venomous spiders on the planet, and eight different species of them wander the forest at night in search of food. So you may want to double check your sleeping bag before you get in, as their venom can lead to trouble breathing and paralysis. Finally, a very famous name in the rainforest, the green anaconda or man-eater. These snakes can grow incredibly large and kill their prey by suffocating them within a tight coiled hold. Number five, Amazon rings. The Amazon rings are famous massive circular ditches, sometimes up to 16 feet deep and just as wide. So how could these geoglyphs have appeared within the forest? The reality seems to be that these were created before the forest itself even existed. It's hard to imagine a time before the Amazon forest grew, but studies suggest that these rings were created long before the forest was. It's thought to be more remnants of life in the Amazon before the Europeans arrived, with an estimated six to 10 million people living in the area. It's unsure just what exactly these rings were used for, and some people have gone as far as to suggest that aliens left the markings in the ground behind, a sort of Amazon crop circle. It's unfortunate that the discovery of these rings was a direct result of the clear cutting and logging going on in the forest. Number four, lost cities. Even as recently as the 20th century, explorers have been venturing into the rainforest for supposed lost cities that have never been found. Some of those explorers even becoming lost, never to be seen again, like the tale of British explorer Percy Fawcett. As it turns out, scientists have discovered that these lost cities that so many went in search of likely did really exist, thanks to some high-tech helicopter remote sensing technology. It seems that there were massive cities that were abandoned only some 600 years ago, and it's believed that up to 2 million people lived in the rainforest at one point. The cities stretch for miles and include things like complex waterway systems and large conical pyramids. The true mystery is what happened to this civilization. How do entire cities disappear into the forest without a trace? As these cities were built with mud bricks and are almost completely destroyed, we may never know what really happened to them. Number three, the man of the hole. One famous resident of the vast rainforest is someone you've probably never heard of before. He is known as the man of the hole, as no one knows his true name or who he really is. So why is he so famous? He's indigenous to the rainforest and is known to be the very last remaining member of his remote tribe. The rest of his people were killed by farmers and land grabbers who wanted to make use of the land that they'd been living on. As a result, he is the loneliest man in the world, no one knowing his language or how to communicate with him. And it seems as though he doesn't want anyone to anyways. He has attacked government officials who have tried to come close living on his now protected territory, digging holes to hide in and capture animals, earning his name of the man in the hole. It's also thought that he may be making these holes to try and capture anyone who would dare get close to him. He has been caught on camera only a few times, showing us that he's still around. Number two, 
El Tunche. If you ever, for some reason, find yourself walking through the rainforest and you hear a distant whistling sound, it would be wise of you not to seek it out, especially if you've been stomping on a few too many plants lately. That's because what you are hearing might be the call of El Tunche, a demon who wanders the forest, protecting the wildlife and condemning those who would harm it. If you haven't done any damage to the forest, then he'll probably just scare you off. But if you have, you might as well start running. By calling out, the demon is trying to entice you to whistle back and reveal your exact location to him. If you do so, El Tunche's call will grow louder and louder, following you wherever you go. Eventually, it invades your mind as you sleep, drawing you into madness. I think that's a good enough reason to start being a little bit kinder to our natural surroundings. Number one, El Lobizon. A widespread legend across South America is that of El Lobizon. It is a werewolf-like creature that can be seen walking on all fours and also on its hind legs. Different from Western and Hollywood interpretations and depictions of werewolves, El Lobizon is not created through a bite, but instead born. Any seventh son that is born in an unbroken line of boys will become the creature, usually transforming around their 13th birthday. The stories have caused people to abandon, give up, or even kill their own seventh son. Every full moon, the boy will transform into the wolf-like creature, hunting down prey with unmatched speed and endurance. While just a legend, with a place as vast as the rainforest, who knows if El Lobizon isn't hiding in those darkest hidden corners. Number 10. Decoy spider. These decoy building spiders are exceptionally small, but they're exceptionally smart. Smart spiders? That's terrifying already. These spiders only measure to be about five millimeters in length, but you might see a much larger spider hanging out in a web that they've created. Now, this might sound alarming at first, but this larger spider is actually fake. Yeah, it's actually a decoy spider that the small spider built out of various materials, such as food, scraps, debris, and even their old skin. These spiders were only discovered pretty recently in the Amazon so not too much is known about them as there still needs to be tons of research done. All we know is that they like to make things that look like a large spider and that's terrifying enough. Maybe it's for defense purposes or maybe it's like the ancient Romans, you know? Maybe they're just statues honoring a spider god. That's terrifying, I take that back. Number nine, red belly piranha. I don't have to explain to you why a piranha is a bad idea to get near. I mean, we've all seen Piranha 3 D, right? That's a timeless classic. Well, the red-bellied piranha is one of the most dangerous piranhas in the piranha game. Its behavior is way more aggressive than that of an average piranha. It's almost like an acre of the rainforest disappearing every second is making it more aggressive. Yeah, I'd be aggressive too in those waters, no doubt about it. Number eight, the electric eel. I say, ooh, girl, don't touch this. First of all, never rub an electric eel like that. Never rub one like they're a genie lamp. You'll want more than three wishes at that point. That's horrible. That was the Moray eel. That one, bite your fingers off easily, but you should never touch an eel in the first place because a lot of them are electric. As its name suggests, these type of eels can mess you up even if you were to get the first hit. Specifically, the newly discovered two and a half meter Electrophorus volti, appropriately named after Alessandro Volta, AKA the guy who invented the battery. It can release a shock up to 860 60 volts, more than seven times the voltage of a wall plug. In our number seven spot today, we have the Patu. I don't know if that's how you say that, but that's who we're going with. Okay, these guys definitely aren't the strangest thing on today's list, but they certainly look extremely strange. I'm sure a lot of us have seen a picture of them at some point because of their wild appearance that reminds you of your one friend that just can't quite keep it together. But despite them having a bit of a silly look on their faces, these birds actually possess some pretty cool skills. They are masters at disguising themselves and have the ability to remain motionless for days on end. They're nocturnal creatures, so it isn't often that we get to spot them flying around. And during the daytime, they're so good at camouflaging themselves that you'll likely only be seeing them if they want to be seen. This is just one of those scenarios where we are reminded to not judge a book by its cover because despite their goofy appearance, they're actually pretty serious birds with some serious talent. In our number six spot today, we have the bullet ant. Before I dive into this one, guys, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying the video so far. I'm sure the bullet ant is one creature on this list that many of us know about, but that certainly doesn't mean it isn't very strange. These creatures are obviously ants, but with one feature that makes them unlike others of their kind. They are the world's largest ant, which is cool, but their name is where things get a little crazy. Some people believe they are named for their size as they are roughly the size of a bullet 
it, but it is much more widely speculated that they are named because of the fact that their sting feels like getting shot by a bullet. I have not seen a bullet ant in real life, or been bit by one, and also haven't been shot. So I cannot confirm any of these things, but that's just what the internet tells me. The pain is said to last for 24 hours and causes waves of burning, throbbing, and all consuming pain, which sounds like something I absolutely do not want to experience. Maybe these guys are where the term small but mighty comes from, considering their bite is considered to be one of the most painful things a person can experience. I think I might try my best to stay away from them, even though it's unlikely I'll die from a bullet ant, I'm just not taking any risks and I'd rather not go through that kind of pain if I can avoid it. In our number 5 spot today we have Raffelsia. Ok, remember how I said that there's a bunch of abnormally large things that can be found in the Amazon rainforest? Well, here's another one just to prove I wasn't lying. This flower is the world's largest flower, but it also has no roots, no stems, and no leaves, and instead lives as a holoparasite on the vines of a tetrastigma, which is a genus of plants in the grape family. This flower is very similar to fungi, and the only identifiable feature that is distinctly plant like are the huge flowers, but even those are unusual of course due to their unbelievable size as well as their reddish brown color. One more strange part about these huge flowers is their smell which apparently is comparable to rotting flesh. These flowers are also apparently on the verge of extinction, so between that and the smell I feel like this might just be a flower to stay far far away from. In our number 4 spot today we have the decoy building spider. Ok, I do not like spiders so I really didn't want to include include any on this list, but I absolutely had to once I found out about this small but mighty creature. These decoy building spiders are exceptionally small but super smart. These spiders only measure to be about 5 millimeters in length, but you might see a much larger spider hanging out in a web they created. This might sound alarming, but this spider is actually a decoy that the small spider built out of various materials such as food scraps, debris, and even their own old shed skin. It might not be the the most beautiful work of art, but that is an unbelievable defense mechanism for such a tiny creature. These spiders were actually only discovered pretty recently, so not too much is known about them as there still needs to be a ton of research done. It is however believed that this is a feature that has evolved in this particular spider, so it is possible that we only recently discovered it because it might be a newer feature. But the Amazon rainforest does hold many, many living creatures that we have yet to identify, so who really knows? All in all, this spider is very unique and strange, and basically the Michelangelo of spiders. In our number 3 spot today we have the corpse flower. Ok, we're back with another strangely large thing, and this time it is another flower that is called the corpse flower, which is a terrible nickname for a flower. This flower is deep green on the outside and a beautiful burgundy color on the inside, and it also features the world's largest unbranched inflorescence in the world. Both male and female flowers grow inside of the same inflorescence, but the females bloom first with the males following in a day or two, which usually prevents the flowers from self pollinating. These plants usually require 7 to 10 years before the initial blooming period and after that, the blooming tends to be fairly sporadic. Some will take another 7 to 10 years and some are able to bloom every other year. As the flower blooms it is around human body temperature which allows for its scent to be quite prominent, which you think would be nice, but apparently this is another flower that smells like a rotting corpse which is where it gets its awful nickname from. These odors however are super helpful to the plant as it allows it to attract pollinators which are usually insects that like to feast on rotting flesh. So I guess while the scent is unbelievably unpleasant to humans, at least there are creatures that are more helpful to this flower that actually enjoy it, which I guess is just probably for the best. In our number 2 spot today we have this plastic eating fungi. This is a fungi that could help us solve one of the world's most pressing issues, which is the overpopulation of plastic. We have way too much plastic on this earth and virtually no way to get rid of it, but this discovery could help us fix that. This is the very first fungus ever found that can support itself on polyurethane in anaerobic conditions, which means that it not only can consume plastic, but it also does not require oxygen for growth. In fact, oxygen may even affect it negatively, which could make it a perfect species to help remove plastic from our oceans and other places with little to no oxygen. This is a fairly new discovery 
which means it of course is still in the research phase. It will require more time before we are exactly sure how to best utilize its incredible properties, but this may be the solution to one of humanity's biggest questions and problems. And of course this isn't a ticket to just start throwing plastic in the oceans and should serve as a reminder to us all that our earth is full of unbelievable things and if we stopped ruining it for a second we might be able to realize its full potential and see just how lucky we all are to have such a beautiful planet. In our number one spot today we have Silkhenge. Okay, we already talked about one spider that was actually pretty cool and begrudgingly I have to talk about another one because it also is equally as unbelievable but here's the strangest part about it. We don't even actually know what the spider is. There is some kind of spider that is making what is referred to as Silkhenge. This piece of spider art was first discovered in 2013 by Troy Alexander who posted a photo of it on the internet asking for help in identifying it but no one could help because it's a totally unknown phenomena. These structures are created by spiders and help with reproduction because they're actually protecting eggs. There is one main spire that is constructed of spider silk and that is where the eggs are contained and then surrounding that spire is a sort of circular fence that is also made of spider silk. The name comes from its similar appearance to Stonehenge and no one knows what kind of spider is making these insane structures or if it's a multitude of different kinds of spiders. Either way it certainly is one of the most astonishing things being created by a tiny mysterious creature. Hopefully one day we find out the creators of these sculptures so we can give them the proper credit they deserve. If you enjoyed the video about creepy Amazon discoveries, then you have to check out this video about more forest discoveries, including the elusive and legendary creature Bigfoot. Click the video now.